What's up, Soli? It's Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Today, what you're looking at, today we're doing coconut chicken. You heard me right, coconut chicken, man. I've got three tablespoons of coconut oil on a medium heat. And right away, we're going to go in with one, two, three chicken legs with the back with the drumstick thigh and the back attached that is the one that usually comes on sale here in Canada so I'm unrocking that yes I'm trying to break the bank salt black pepper and so let's talk about this chicken for a second I'm just flipping them over it's been on that side for about four minutes as I said, these are chicken legs with the back attached. It's been seasoned. <laughs> I know we're pushing the envelope there. When we say seasoned, when we refer to salt and black pepper, but the herbage that we're accustomed to in the Caribbean will come in shortly. I've trimmed off most of the fat that I saw and the extra skin. You need that skin. That skin is going to help preserve that chicken because it's going to go into the oven after. Plus. We're going to get a nice color and that is what we're doing here right now on that low medium sort of flame we're trying to get some color on that chicken and that is where we're going to build all that flavor on and the reason why i started with that coconut oil is because this is a coconut chicken i want to build that coconut flavor i just don't want it only to come from the coconut milk we'll be adding but by starting with that virgin coconut oil there i'm telling you man that is beer flavors up in there it's been going now for about 10 minutes. I flipped it over again, as you can see. Don't stress too much if you don't get too much color here. The whole idea is we, we did try, and we have that fawn on the bottom there. I'm gonna fish these out. And if you wanted to use chicken thighs, or drumsticks, or a combination of both, by all means, do so. I'm just gonna take that skin, just scrape that skin off the bottom there. I'm gonna toss that in the rubbish. Additionally, you notice how much fat we have left back here? I'm going to take out half of that fat because the fat from the skin of the chicken has rendered down. Let me just show you guys what I mean. There's a lot of fat in there. We're going to take about half of that fat out, turn the heat down to low, take out about half of that fat. Do not toss it down your sink, please. It will block your sink. With my heat on low, as I said, we're going to go in with a diced onion and that is a sort of a medium sized onion that's just been diced up give that a little stir we've got about five cloves of garlic here oh, a piece of tomato went in there not yet buddy hold on you're going in soon enough and i've got here two really really peppers that's totally totally optional it's totally up to you we're going to go in with some more of that first round black pepper. With that heat on low, it means we won't burn the garlic. That's very important. Now, believe it or not, I took out almost four tablespoons of fat from that pot. That I can tell you how much fat was rendered from that skin. We're going to go in with a scallion. And that's a nice big scallion, the, the tops, the green and the white parts. Some fresh thyme. Give that another quick little stir. Heat is still on low. I just want everything to start releasing all those flavors to develop that niceness that we expect from any dish coming out of the Caribbean. And this dish here is something very similar to something I had in the French speaking Caribbean many moons ago. You know, it's COVID time, you can't travel, so why not bring the islands home to you? And you know, share the video with your friends too. That is what friends are for. Show them the niceness. And when we cook, it's all about balancing those flavors. So what I like doing at this point, and not only is it going to help balance with the acidity, it's also going to help us create that lovely gravy. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have some steamed rice to go with this, something is wrong with you. Because this here, it goes well with some nice steamed rice. In goes that tomato. And again, heat is still on low. We're going to cook that for another two or three minutes until the tomatoes are nice and soft and start falling apart. 
In the meantime, preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And building on those flavors, those rich Caribbean flavors, some grated garlic in there. I mean ginger. Where did I get garlic from, boy? So not too much. I remember that will give it a sort of a peppery note as well. For that smoky kind of vibe. Some paprika. And that's a smoked paprika. And you know we gotta pull out the Caribbean green seasoning. I have here a tablespoon of Caribbean green seasoning. Boom! That is making an appearance. It has to make an appearance, man. And Caribbean green seasoning, if you're new to the culinary culture of the Caribbean, is simply a puree or a blend of all the herbs we like using in our dishes, along with garlic and spicy peppers, seasoning peppers, all those different things. I mean, you personalize to your own liking. And here, this version that I have can be found at CaribbeanPod.com, the recipe for that. This is still cooking down nice and slow. As all that niceness happens in the pot there, what we're gonna do now is deglaze the bottom of that to help scrape up, to loosen up some of that fawn on the bottom. You see that niceness there, that caramelization. We want to bring, we want to really release all that. So what I'm gonna go, I got some white wine. And you, can, you don't have to go too high. I'm gonna turn my heat up now to medium. We don't have to go too heavy with the wine. I know many of you are concerned about alcohol and food, that, that, that wine's going to burn out and they're going to be left with the niceness of the grapes, that deep flavor left back in here, yeah? As that wine cooks off, and notice how everything has been released from the bottom there now. If you want to use a wooden spoon, you can <laughs> be my guest. Now, one of the things I forgot to mention, ladies and gentlemen, is that cast iron is an oven proof pot that is going to finish off in the oven now if you want you can start it here in your frying pan and then transfer everything to your baking dish totally up to you we're gonna go in with a bit more salt and later on we can taste it and adjust it accordingly now we talked about balance and we talk about the acidity from the tomato the acidity from that wine the sweetness from that wine the other sort of sweetness we're gonna get here now is that coconut milk you know, we're doing a coconut chicken, so of course we need coconut milk. But for now, let me just try to burn off a little bit more of that wine. Just we want the essence of that wine. We don't want the alcohol. One more thing I must mention. Remember that weary, weary pepper that we added in there? That is very spicy. You break it, it will release all that heat in there. So be mindful of that. Now, the sort of spiciness there, if you just want to skip that all together, or you just want to use some pepper flakes, if that's all you have, by all means, rock what you got. I'm not even trying to make it one bring the back. I'm looking for all kind of peppers you can't find. But the sweetness and the coconut, the reason why you came here is going in now. We're going in with that coconut milk. Mmm, just look at that niceness now. And as it comes up to a boil, we gotta give that a stir just to make sure everything comes together. Like so. We gotta thin it out with some water. Like so, bring that up to a boil and then we're going to tuck the chicken pieces down inside there and then straight into the oven, middle rack, until, yo, one of the best little coconut chicken dishes you'll ever have in your life. It's been bubbling away there now for about two or three minutes. I just want everything to come together. What we're going to do now, and if you're wondering the wine that I use, because that might probably be the question everybody's asking. I use a Riesling and the Riesling, is a, this, this one is very sweet, so that adds a bit of sweetness back to the dish again. So, chicken piece number one, chicken piece number two, and my boy Zaire is trying to get in on the camera action here. I don't know if you guys can hear him on camera there. So we've got all of that happening in the pot there. What we're going to do is take some of that sauce, pour it over the chicken. And later on, as we have it in the oven there, you'll need to do the same thing again. I'm just going to turn my heat down to low, so I don't get burned as I do this. And into the oven, middle rack as I said, until this is tender and falling apart. Now remember about that, we really try not to break it. But before we go, we've got a bay leaf. 
We're gonna tuck that bay leaf in there. You don't need to put a lid on it on anything. Just into the oven, boom, bam, easy. 35 minutes later, we've got a nice thick gravy on the bottom there. Look at this niceness. It's all done. Now it depends on how big pieces of chicken you use as well. How I like to finish it off, some parsley, and some fresh lemon juice. That's just gonna brighten everything up. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. A lovely coconut chicken recipe. You guys can rock this. Some nice steamed rice, your favorite rice, if it's basmati or whatever else. Always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. Do give the recipe a try, man. It's real nice. I'm just putting the finishing touches on a curry stew pork with kale. Man, one of the best tasting little kale recipes you'll ever put together. Stay tuned, you're gonna love this one, man.